continue to eat. We just have, I just want to give you a, um, a little quick introduction to our guest speaker. He doesn't need any introduction because he's such a, a staple in Ohio County. He's been a high school principal. This is just some of the things. I'm just off the top of my head. A superintendent and now a representative for our uh, district. So um, welcome, Scott Lewis. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to come and talk to the chamber and any group in Ohio County for that matter. But, uh, you know, last session, that, that's what I'm here to talk about. I, they want me to give an update on what the session, how it went, and so forth. But last session was a 60 day session, meaning it was a budget year. So when you're in the 60 day session, most of your time spent up there are on budget issues and drafting the <coughs> budget and so forth. This was a sort of a a different year for us. This was the first time the House passed a budget first, I meaning we got our budget out there, our priorities, and we wanted it out there way ahead of time so people could have some input on it and tell us what they liked, didn't like. The governor usually does that first and sends us to us, so we, um, we did that first and then, uh, like I said, the, the governor, the budget is done by the legislative body, not the governor. So he can send ideas or, or whatever, but the body is what passes the budget. Uh, some of the things that come out of this budget, uh, we've heard a lot of talk and we do hear judge about broadband. Yeah. We pass legislation that will speed the process up by allowing co-ops and others to use their existing infrastructure to run those lines. And it just makes sense. We have companies like AT&T and all that, they want to come in and get the business, but they won't run it to the last mile, to the people that we really need broadband. So, you know, we're really proud of, uh, of that and we're hoping that that process speeds along. Uh, something else we passed, and I can't remember if we passed it this session or last session, was uh, we put a mandate on uh, what insurance companies and pharmacies could charge for insulin. And I think that's either 30, 35, $35. Some people were paying $500 a month for insulin. I, I, and I think that's huge. And we, you know, we battled the pharmaceutical companies and they're a big player. I can tell you that right now. And there were some other things that we didn't get past this time because of the, the, the lobbying efforts that they put forth. But hopefully we can expand on that. Another thing in our budget, uh, in 2018, we passed, we lowered the state income tax <coughs> Uh, from 6% to 5%. In, in this budget, we're loaning that to 4.5%. And what we did, we, we built in there that as the revenue grows in the state, that that would come down a half percent each time it met a certain revenue point with the optimum uh, goal of getting that to zero. And so, and, and hopefully in a few years from now, it's gonna be four or five years down the road, we will have zero income taxes and more of a sales tax. You can look for a, a seven to eight percent sales tax is what what the goal is, and some people are saying, well, you know, why is this important? Well, you can look at Tennessee and other states that have done that, and Tennessee used to be the same size as Kentucky as far as population. It's not anymore. You know, they, they've out, outgrown us. Uh, another reason that we need to do that right now: fifty percent of Kentuckians pay one hundred percent of the taxes. Okay, so that, that's a, that's another reason. Uh, another thing in this budget, we did raises for all state employees. First time it's been done, I couldn't tell you how long, probably 10 or 12 years. And pretty good raises. Uh, some of those are getting from 8 to 12% raises. Uh, one thing that, that was put out there early on by the governor was that we didn't include raises for teachers, that they were the only one that didn't get raises, mandated raises. And there's a reason for that. And, being a former superintendent, I know this, okay? State employees is state money, mm -hmm. that's it. There's no other money that goes into that. So we can mandate and, and control that. Your school district's made up of state money, local money, and federal money, okay? So the thought was we put the money in the budgets, which we did. I'll give an example. Ohio County got two point, probably three or four million extra money this, this coming uh, year. And hopefully they'll do that for raises. We didn't mandate them again. If Ohio County gave a 5% raise last year, they may not be able to give a 5% if that was what the mandate was for this year. Each county is different. Some counties have more local money than state money. 
and it's a formula that, that our education departments went by for years to equalize the funding across the state. It's worked pretty well because there's some counties without that equalization wouldn't be off, able to offer the kids what other counties do. So again, if you hear the award money or uh, teachers want to get, the money's in their budgets. Now, again, if they gave a 5% last year and, and can't afford but maybe a 2%, that's, that's on them because again, they have local monies coming in there. If we mandate it, that means we're mandating how they spend their local money too. So again, there's raises for teachers. They just won't mandate it. Uh, we also funded all the retirement systems fully funded all the retirement systems, and, and there's one, KRS is in pretty bad shape, and I think we put 600 extra million dollars in that one to try to get it back up to par. Uh, we did $15,000 across the board raises for troopers, and I'm proud to say that I, I sponsored that bill. That was my bill that, that we got across the finish line, and uh, it's much needed. Our allotment for troopers in the state's 1,150, and we were down to 700 some troopers. So that's going to help that situation, getting more people in the profession. But what else it does, there was 200 and something troopers getting ready to retire. They're not going to retire now. They'll see this benefit by staying on their uh, account on their retirement years and up their income as they retire. So uh, we think that was good. Another thing locally, Judge and, and the Mayor, you know, we've heard about how bad the 231 is in downtown Beaverdam. And as all that was going on, we had already secured the funding uh, for that. And it, it's going to take a while because the, the problem with that road is it's the water. There's not enough drainage. So this summer, they're going to come in and fix all the drainage, you know, engineer that right, and then blacktop it. Maybe we'll never, never have to deal with that issue again. So it, anyway, when you hear people, and, it, and rightfully so, but it's, it's just been patch built in the past, and this time, hopefully it's gonna be done right. So we, we have uh, secured the funding for that. Uh, at this time, here's what I like to do. I always like to open it up for questions. These are just some of the highlights that I felt like that you all might be interested in. If there's other issues that you think you, you have a question about or something like that, I always like to give, give you all a chance to ask me anything that you'd like. Except you, Trevor, you get to you don't get to ask questions. Uh, who picks the speakers? <laughs> we need somebody else. Evidently, they've run out of speakers. Uh, Scott, the uh, transportation uh, issues that was taken up this time. I know that uh, the president of the Senate has always said to fix our CRA. We needed a comprehensive plan that included the electric vehicles, uh, which you're so concerned about. And I know you did do something with electric vehicles. Can you explain that? Well, there's there's going to be a tax on electric vehicles because they use our loans too. And I can't remember what that tax would be, but it certainly makes sense that you know they're driving our roads just like everybody else is. So, uh, and and I think you'll see more of that. Uh, there was there was a probably two, not this session, but the session before, there was a push to raise the taxes on, on uh, gas. And we were in the middle of a pandemic and, and I was, you know, I tried to rally troops and, and was one that did rally the troops say, we, you know, we don't need to <coughs> pass a gas tax now. We know that the federal rates, I mean, gas prices were gonna go up, we knew that. And so now they're what, 419 and us adding another tax on there for the state. <coughs> I couldn't, I couldn't see that, and I, I won't vote for anything like that. I'm not with a farm and gas tax, and uh, you know, I think we need to spend our money better on what we, what we do have, and hopefully as our revenue increases in the state, uh, we can do that without raising taxes. That would be my hope. Uh, that is the only fund the county gets to yeah. run the fix South County roads. This yeah. comes from the uh, gas tax, and we get it in the form of county road aid or CRA that we call it. And that's been pretty good in the past, I think. Scott? Yes. Two things. One, and I know this is federal, but I don't know if you might have some information on Any more uh, movement on the interstate status for Red Hill Park Road from I-69 to 165? I have not heard anything about yeah, that. I know they're passing yeah. Frankfurt to, I mean, in well, Washington started. Well, and I know the reason that we're doing the, the interchanges like we are is to meet that 
you have to do that. The access has to be like that, or you can't be uh, it can't be labeled like that. Yeah, lots of people give you a five year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what it was five years for the you know, what you're doing now. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing, I don't know, last session or the session before last, we had that lift issue with the local income, the local sales tax. Yeah, that. Uh, we, um, I think we passed that in the House, the House passed and I don't think the Senate did. The well, you know, there's a, it, and I, I sort of see both sides of that. And basically, what he's talking about is <laughs> giving the dis, giving the counties and cities the opportunity to tax on their own, like you know, uh, put it on the ballot if people want it. We would have to put it on there as a constitutional amendment to allow that happen, and I think that's part of the holdup. Uh, and what it would do, it would let counties decide and cities decide if they wanted a big project or something, they could put whatever percent tax on there to pay for that and they could actually take it off if they wanted to after the fact. But, uh, you know, conservative people, even, you know, I've had calls on that from here from our uh, voters that said, we don't want you to do that. And I'm like, well, it's not telling them you know, they still is optional form of doing this. It. Not we're not putting the tax on, but yeah, if they get that opportunity, they're going to put the tax on. So that's, I think that's why you're seeing a lot of hold yeah, up. I don't in, think it's sold very well. Like I say, yeah. Hey, my example I use is our regional wastewater system. They've yeah. been in place at the time. Ohio County could have put in whatever one percent sales tax to keep them outside the county. Hey, right. What's the regional wastewater is paid for? The tax would go away. Yeah. We wouldn't have to have sewer rates we have now. Yeah. But it still has to be elected voted on by the people. That's right. It has to be on the ballot. So. It has to be a constitutional amendment on the ballot. Right. And, and and honestly, some of it's hard to pass stuff on a constitutional amendment on the ballot. Well, if you remember, I think it was Marcy's law or something. There was some problems with that one was put on the ballot because there's only so much space, and you try to put on there what the people need to know, but sometimes you, you can't do it. Oh, yeah. Was there any extra money put in to cover the uh, senior bills for the C-19 people that were put on in the pandemic and still haven't gone off? From the state or the federal? The state. I don't think there was. If there was, I missed it. I don't remember. Scott, you're talking about putting your own ballot in what, what's the inside Frankfurt to the sports game? We were reading all this stuff, you know, from both sides, and it's, I don't think it always paints the picture that what's true. Well, there's, in, on the sports game, there's a lot of factors that play into that. And Churchill Downs and all those are a big player. The horse industry is a big player on whether they want something passed or not. And of course, leadership in both the House and the Senate decides what gets voted on on the floor. So, I mean, there still could be a majority of your people that want something and not not be brought up for whatever reason uh, by House or, or Senate leadership. You know, there's arguments on both sides that we don't be promoting uh, something that is a social issue that could be harm people or whatever. And then the other part of that is they're doing it anyway, and they're doing it, and honestly, they're doing it all through Ohio County. We just don't get the taxes on it. There's people with that every single day on something here in Ohio County. Now, is that good or bad? I don't gamble, but you know, we we certainly are losing the, the tax revenue to all the surrounding states that are around us. And uh, the other issue is medical marijuana. And it, you know, I, I'm not for recreational marijuana. I never will vote for that. But the way that medical marijuana was written, it was only in pill form. It had to be authorized by a physician. There's people out there that that could, as a natural plant, that that could help that are taking now these high-powered drugs that they get addicted to. So, you know, if a doctor would authorize it, and, uh, it'd be only in pill form, and hopefully for people that need it, I, I can support that. But I, I'll never vote for recreational marijuana. I don't think that's, I don't think that's the direction that we need to go. Mayo. Yes, sir. Uh, Mayo Bill Bowman asked about the uh, Medicaid and Medicare and Medicaid and Medicare I do want to thank you for your support. Uh, I didn't have a primary and I, I'm not going to have a general, and that's always good. And the downfall of being a state representative is you have to run every two years. 
And it makes it tough when you're in a 60 day session, session, you get out April 15th and the primary is May 17th. Right. So you're behind. If you've got an opponent, you're behind. Because when you come home on the weekends, you, there's other stuff that you, you need to take care of in your personal life or whatever instead of being out there knocking doors all the time. And if I had a opponent, I would have been doing that. But uh, again, I want to thank you for your confidence in me. And uh, I always try to represent you the best I can. I always try to look at all the issues. And, uh, you know, I vote different than maybe some of my counterparts up there simply because of where I live and who I represent. You know, I, sometimes I'll vote with labor when all my colleagues won't vote for labor. You know, we have a lot of coal miners retired here that have supported me and are still supporting me. And if, if they call me and want me think that I can help them a certain way by voting you know, on an issue, that's what I do. And, you know, sometimes all my Republican friends are up there looking at me going, what are you doing? I'm representing our people. That's what we were put up there to do. We weren't up there to represent our party. We're to represent you all. And it, it does make it tough sometimes. And that's why some things pass and some things don't pass. You know, and I always said when I took this job, uh, I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. I, I, I've taken a lot of hit, uh, hit on my stances on public education. I went in as a public education. If I get voted out, I'm going to be in the same way. Public education. I think it's important. You know, 98% of our kids are going to be in public schools. And the Constitution says any tax money, any uh, state money, or whatever, is to be spent on a group of common schools. So I have no, nothing against private schools. Or charter schools or anything like that, I think there should be school choice. But the Constitution says the state money is to be spent on public schools, not private or others. So uh, I didn't mean to get in that. <laughs> I, I take a lot of heat on that from the party sometimes. So, uh, but I'm not going to change my stance on that because I believe that. Well, I want to thank you for being accessible to uh, He hears from me a lot more when he's in Frankfurt than he does when he's in Beaver Dam. Yeah. So. Well, that, and that's another thing. You know, I always give people my phone number. My door's always open. Uh, if you don't have my number, I'll give it to you. I'll throw it out there again. It's 270-922-6814. And you can call me on any issue. And if I don't know the answer, I'll find it out for you. And if, if there's something I don't think I can help you with, I'll say, you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to help you, but here's a number to somebody that maybe can Again, thank you all a lot for the opportunity to speak to you. And, uh, remember, if you haven't voted, you need to vote. And now more than ever in our country, we need everybody to vote. Uh, we've got some divisive issues, and no matter how you bleed, your voice can be heard by your vote. So thank you very much. We're going to move into the business part of our meeting now. Um, election of the 2022 and 2023 officers and directors. Pause that so you all can see the list there. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the nominating committee has recommended this slate of voter officers and directors for the 2022 and 2023 fiscal year. So at this time, I'm going to ask the nominees to stand. Alex Emery with Ohio County Schools. I don't think he's here today. Garrett Addington <coughs> with Kennergy. Sam Alford, Beard and Tourism. Curtis Howland with First Kentucky Bank <coughs> and Carter Harrell with Carter Harrell State Farm and then I would like to also ask all of our board members for the 2022 and 2023 fiscal year to stand And now, does anyone have a motion to accept the 2022-2023 officers and directors? I'll make a motion, Sarah. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay, and then for sh just have a show of hands, all those mm -hmm. in favor? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we had a motion from Travis Johnson, and a second from Shannon Coots. All right, thank you. You can sit down. We're going to hold our installation of officers and directors at our next meeting in June. And then now we're going to draw for our door prizes. <coughs> so for our first, we're going to draw for two tickets to Larry the Cable Guy. And that's going to be August the 6th. And that is compliments of Beaverdam Tourism. So you'll just see Judy for those tickets. Eight, eight, seven, three, five, four. Okay, we have a winner. So you'll just see Judy for those tickets. Okay, and then for our second door prize, the Sicilian Bank has supplied a um, kind of picnic basket with a cooler and some other goodies, and then a cornhole board or bean bag toss, whichever one you call it. <laughs> Get your tickets ready again. Yeah. Eight, eight, seven, three, five, one. Oh, okay. Right. So you can just come up here after we're finished. Okay. And then we do have a ribbon cutting scheduled for May 27th at Allen's Auto Sales in Hartford. And I think that's at noon. Okay. And then for May 27th, at Allen's Auto Sales in Hartford. And I think that's at noon. And then did anyone have members or guests with them that they wanted to introduce today or any new members here? Well, that's Robert from 323 Staffing. So we just joined. I used to be over here in the market in insurance years ago. So but I'm at 323 Staffing out of Owensboro. Our corporate office is there. Brittany, we have an office here now that means that we're at the hub. So we staff for any and all positions in this in this Ohio County market. So Brittany's been with us for uh, Two weeks, so months. It all runs together after all. <laughs> <laughs> two months, two months. So she's located at the hub, so she's in the new all the time, all the candidates to get an answer job that we have. So we just we love this market and we want to see it grow, continue to grow, and we want to help you with that. Whatever admin position, factory work, or whatever, we can help you staff your, your company. So we're glad to be here. Thank you. Well, we're glad to have you all. If you ever need any help or have any questions, feel free to call us. Absolutely. Thank you. Did anyone have any other announcements? Okay, our next meeting is going to be June 21st. So we'll see you all then.